This is Andy Shore from the Washington Hospital Center with your pulmonary and critical care literature review update for the month of March. The second article is from Fell and colleagues, which was published in the Blue Journal, uh, the American Journal of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine, and it looked at prognosis in patients in IPF. IPF is a hard disease, very high short-term mortality, very few acceptable, if any, therapies outside, say, lung transplant, which is not an option for many of the patients with this disease. And so counseling patients about their prognosis is important. Risk stratification is also important because it gives us a severity of illness tool to help us decide who to enroll in clinical trials in the future so we can make sure that, say, populations are balanced when we're studying an investigational agent. What Fell and colleagues did was look at survival as a function of performance on a cardiopulmonary exercise test. They looked at 117 patients and looked at their VO2 max. And what they found was that at a threshold VO2 max of 8.3, this segregated survivors from non-survivors very, very clearly. So for example, in unadjusted analyses, the 20% uh, of the patients survived three years if they had a VO2 max of less than 8.3. Interestingly, patients who had a VO2 max of above 8.3 at three years, about 65% of them were still alive. This significant relationship persisted after adjusting for a number of confounders. Uh, and actually, the hazard ratio for death was about threefold higher, independent of DLCO, FBC, and what have you, even in pay, you know, based on this 8.3 threshold. They also had serial testing in some of these patients. In about 99 of 117 patients, they had serial tests with another uh, cardiopulmonary exercise test six months apart. They found that there was no helpful information on that second test. So that's important. So serial testing didn't help here. Now routinely what's recommended, or what most of us do, is a six minute walk test. A six minute walk test has been criticized for issues about patient effort and certainly for issues about reproducibility. What they found here was that even after adjusting for other measures on the six minute walk test, the cardiopulmonary exercise test did add helpful prognostic information and the 8.3 threshold on the cardiopulmonary exercise test was a better predictor of outcome than say just desaturation during a six minute walk test. So it did add something. What they don't tell us in this manuscript is how much more it added. How many more patients who are at high risk for early death did you identify by going from a six minute walk test, which is not particularly labor intensive, to putting 117 patients through a cardiopulmonary exercise test? So it's really a question of what's the incremental knowledge that's gained, and we just didn't have that in this manuscript. The other thing they did find was that patients who had worse performance on their cardiopulmonary exercise test was not surprisingly associated with lower FBCs and certainly older age and lower DLCOs. It would have been interesting to understand uh, something about the issue of pulmonary hypertension in this population. Certainly pulmonary arterial hypertension can be a sequelae of IPF through any number of potential mechanisms that aren't well understood right now, but that's certainly a marker for a poor outcome in patients who have IPF, particularly those listed for lung transplant. Again, it would be interesting to know how having pulmonary hypertension would have affected the outcomes of this and would an echo have given you as much information or a right heart cath as the cardiopulmonary exercise test? Just wasn't answered here. So in its root or at its, at its, at its core, we're still looking for the holy grail of prognosis and this 8.3 on the, in terms of the VO2 max on the cardiopulmonary exercise test is unique because it is probably a reproducible test. It's just more labor intensive for our patients uh, and it may add to six minute walk. So we're gonna have to wait and see how this plays out in terms of validation and future analyses. And with that, this is Andy Shore with your pulmonary and critical care literature update for March. Hope everyone's having a good day. Thank you.